Today is a good day. The sun is out. Got out for work a little early and my new front drive shaft came. So I'm gonna go throw this thing on. We're gonna go test drive the car. Uh, I'm gonna go take this old one off really quick and I'll show you guys what the problem is. Damn, I just whacked my head right on the freaking yoke. There's gonna be a bruise there. Jeez, oh, did I just did, oh, don't do it. Here on this freaking stud. That's gonna be a bruise. I hate not having a lift. Shit is stupid. First, we got it off. It took a little longer. It took me like five, 10 minutes to take it off. I don't wanna film all of it because it's useless and after hitting my head. Um, that right there felt good. Uh, we got the drive shaft off now. I'm going to show you guys the washers that came with the new drive shaft. And um, he actually centered out the, uh, he bored out the center of them. Then he machined out the center of them because the shaft of this viscous is uh, sticking too far out of the bearing with these BMW bearings, um, allowing the yoke, the flange on the inside to not tighten properly. And I'll explain better when we get into that. I got a comment about these, um, the way these brackets are put on. Uh, a lot of people are saying you have to, you know, plate the frame rail and all that. And I'm not pushing the amount of power or torque to really have an issue with that. Um, these are a lot stronger than they look. I've had a rib nutted in here, and I ran tens with these rib nutted. I mean, given it was a full bar um, across here, which I can probably just bolt one on here. Maybe get some longer bolts. I have a bolt-on type bar. I still need to uh, grind these, these welds down. The popcorn. I mean, some of them don't even look bad, honestly. I mean, you can you can grind it down. We're rookies here. We're not pro welders, so we have to do that. Uh, with that said, this will definitely hold the power. They're like I said, they're stronger than they look. So let's get out here and let's go compare the old dry shaft with the new one. Now this old dry shaft right in front of me has a very subtle uh, shake in it or a very subtle play which is enough to cause plenty of vibration. This new one has a more updated U-joint on it. This is an old style U-joint. So I think it was on the yoke itself, there's some flop. I just, I was able to re recreate it. It's very difficult to recreate it when it's not bolted up to the car. It might've been the one on the actual drive shaft. That end right here, not, not the side. Anyway, let's go to this new one and check it out. So the first thing I noticed, this is a new one right here. First thing I noticed was it has less weights on it. There's just something about less weights. To me, it seems like it's just nicer, more balanced. You need the less weights from the beginning. So anyway, don't know if that's 100% true or maybe, yeah, I don't know. Um, another thing I noticed is this new U-joint looks like... That looks the same, but he said, oh, they look a little different. He said this one is a better brand or better company. It is a forged U joint, it takes a thousand horsepower. Apparently, this one was the same way, just this one came defective, and it's pretty much the same drive shaft, just with an updated U joint, not shaking a whole lot. Uh, one of the better upgrades, not upgrades, but one of the other things that he sent was uh, these new. Washers and they come open real quick. All right, so the main difference with these washers, I'm going to show you guys, is 
You can see the center of it has been machined out. So this will sit against the splines on the viscous coupler because they're poking through the yoke on the drag shaft. Um, my solution in the time being was grab a thin washer, kind of bore out the center so it fits around the splines and kind of recreate this washer with two washers. So just call it ghetto, whatever, but I got the drag shaft to tighten, so I'm not too pressed on that. But these are really sick. These are badass. And uh, I work with PFT to have these made. Well, he machined them and all that stuff, but I kind of, you know, pointed out that they do not tighten properly, at least on my setup with the BMW bearings. So now from here on out, he's going to be machining his washers. Um, he's going to be making them like this so, so he doesn't run into any issues like I did. That was also a problem with the play that was being caused along with the defective U-joint. I'm hoping the car does not shake as much. So let me get this new drive shaft on and we're going to go for a little rip. Now there's also a uh, Zerk fitting on the slip joint itself. Uh, he told me it's mainly for, uh, you don't want to, keeps it from hydro locking when you grease it. We can drive it without greasing it, so I'm not gonna, you know, press too hard on that, but it's gonna be good to drive. It's not raining, it's nice and sunny out, not worried, especially just for a little quick test drive, but I'm gonna have to get a grease gun and grease it at some point. All right, since so I'm here, let me show you guys how uh, this washer's supposed to go on. Just recess side, faces the viscous. So it sits, viscous splines sit in the washer. If you don't do that, you're defeating the purpose of these washers. So make sure you guys do that. Just chilling under the car, hit my head, struggling with the very little space I have. The washer, I dropped it and it just rolls off. It rolls off. Dude, come on. All right. This is hard with one hand, but yeah, torque it to 24 foot pounds. Now, uh, Jesus, dude, do I even have the right size on this? this is a question, dude. What the? Nothing but fucking problems. 24 foot pounds. You could use Loctite. I use blue Loctite. I do recommend uh, red. Now on this side, now those washers. It's hard to really tell, but they see how flush they sit on the yoke before you were able to see the splines underneath the washer. So it was not wanting to tighten because the viscous coupler was sticking out, basically making the washer not clamp against the yoke. Um, I did not use Loctite on this one. Uh, reason being is it's such a thin head bolt and you don't want to use red Loctite on that and you'll probably end up stripping it. And it's not, not hard to get to, but it's not the easiest bolt to get to. And upon disassembling, the stock shafts, which I was hoping you guys could see from here. Maybe my little, there's three little, whatever. Upon dis disassembling those, I did not see any signs of Loctite on these bolts, so I did not put any on this one. I ran this car, I ran a 10 with this car without any Loctite. Nothing came loose, so use Loctite, I guess, if you want to. I recommend the blue, for sure. And a huge shout out to PFT for helping me out with the drive shaft on this car. As soon as I had a problem, he said he would send me out a new one right away. And uh, he also machined those washers like I showed you guys earlier. So that was, was pretty awesome, very good service. I would definitely recommend PFT if you guys wanna go check them out. All right, so now let's go do a little rip on this thing. It's like Fred Durst for a second. So we're going to go test drive this thing and hopefully nothing shakes. So let's go. All right, you guys think I can fit a lift in here? Probably not. Um, I don't even think the quick jack things would work. I mean, sure, you can fit the quick jacks in here. But if I have to get on my back still, it's a waste of money. I want a full lift. All right. Perfect. Woo, you sound so rowdy and cold. Alright, so we're gonna wait for 
that to go down and wait for that to not that, that to go up.